Okay, here we are. Here is the second session um, of You Create Art at Home, brought to you by me, Karen Bessel, um, and because you're one of my friends now, you can call me Bess. So all of my inner circle call me Bess, so you guys can call me Bess from now on. It sounds like yesterday's was great fun. Um, big shout out to all of those that um, took part. It, and even if you didn't take part in it live, you can do it afterwards. Um, I've got some friends in uh, UAE that are online. Um, hi to the West family. Um, my friends in Cornwall, people that I taught at Bodmin College are there. Um, doing it, uh, teachers that I taught with at Bollerman College, um, they're doing it with their children. Um, and it's lovely. Uh, Bodmin is where I'm from, in Cornwall, in England. I, did, I found it hilarious yesterday when people were writing comments saying, you sound so Australian. And yet I hear myself back uh, and I sound as Cornish as they are. So it's weird how we all hear each other. But I did wear my pasties today, my Cornish pasties. Uh, in honour of uh, all my beautiful friends and family back in England. And uh, sounds like this couldn't come at a better time because schools are finishing for you guys tomorrow. And I'm sure, to be honest, Australian schools will end up following suit. So um, if I can help in any way, and if not, we can have fun. And if not, I'm just going to sit here drawing and painting every day for the next week, couple of weeks. Let's hope it's not months. Um, but even so, uh, it was great fun. I really enjoyed it, doing it yesterday. Um, and I've had lots of comments. I've got an aged care facility that are interested in doing some stuff with me. So I will, hi Melinda, that's one of my teachers that teach my children. So welcome to Art Club. Um, yeah, I've got an aged care facility that are interested in doing some uh, sip and paints with me. So we won't be sipping wine. Well, we could sip wine, but um, we're going to do some stuff. So I'll put some times for adult classes and some times for ones for um, preschoolers as well. This is a more generic class today so that you can... Um, if you're over eight, I reckon you can probably do it yourself. If you're under eight um, and you've got mum or dad or sister or um, a helper or a parent or something around that can give you some guided help, but you should manage okay. Most of you guys are pretty good at colouring, so and this is pretty much a colouring exercise. So why don't we get down to it? Now, today I'm going to be painting with um, wet acrylics. I'm going to have to lift my phone up at the same time. So I'm going to be painting with wet acrylics. You can do this and do this, draw. you can draw it and then do it with texture if you want to. You can do it with watercolors if you want to. The color that you use to get the finished product doesn't really matter, okay? So if you've only got coloring pencils, just use coloring pencils. Don't forget yesterday we went through how to get yourself a kit, even if you haven't got any art and you've never done it before. There is something at home in your stationery somewhere that you can use. Um, and it, you do not have to follow the same colors as me, all right? Drawing round circles, I know it's been a, many, many years since I've used a compass. So uh, I use my trusty wine glasses. So get yourself a glass or it could be a regular tumbler. They've got perfect circles to draw around. Failing that, you've always got sticky tape uh, is another good thing to use for circles. I've got a rubber and a pencil um, and a pencil sharpener um, and that's to do the drawing. And then I've got a selection of brushes. Again. I'm not really sure what brushes you've got at home. It doesn't really matter. I've got a selection here. I'm going to show you. Big, small, square, round, long. You know, some of them I've, been, I've had for donkey's years. This one was at my art kit when I was at university. So that's how old that is. Hello to Andrew Burroughs. I went to school with you, young man. Um, that's quite amusing. It's funny, isn't it? The world's a small place, you see. We think we're all sort of a million miles away, which we are technically in space, but actually we're all pretty much connected, which is fantastic. All right, so we're going to get started. We're doing these funky um, zebra. And the first thing we're going to do is the drawing part. So we, you can decide whether you want to draw three, four, five, six, two, whatever you want, all right? So just draw as many as you feel comfortable. Today, I'm doing it on a canvas. You can see this is an upcycled canvas. It's already got some marks and stains on it. It's one of those canvas panels that I just had kicking around. Um, if you haven't got a canvas panel or you haven't got a canvas, you can, of course, use paper. If you haven't got paper, and I would say this, for those of you that um, 
want to do some get into painting just use cardboard boxes i use cardboard boxes with kindergarten and um primary school all the time get a bit of cardboard it's great because the reason why you like canvas panels and canvases is because they don't walk when you put water and paint on cardboard is just as good then you can pierce a couple of holes in and the kids can put them up with a pipe cleaner hang them up in their bedroom straight away so you don't need to get anything framed so cardboard's always great okay all right, the first thing we're going to do is draw our um, zebra. Now, I'm going to do it in landscape, which means it's a crossways rather than up, which is portrait. And I'm going to do three, um, three zebra, one, two, three, and I'm going to do two little ones, just like the picture that's already on um, the Facebook page, okay? So, to do that, I'm going to use the bottom of my wine glass. Um, I am going to put it in the centre of my page and now i'm just going to lift it up so you can see where it is and i'm going to draw around the base so because this because i've never done this before and because i'm new to it clearly i don't have uh, a funky instagram um stand that i can put my phone on and i don't have uh, a clasp or professional lighting i didn't get my hair and makeup done so it's take me as you find me people um and which means that i'll be picking up my glass uh, picking up my phone to show you as i go so i've drawn three circles i'm going to pick it up and show you again mm, there one two three right in the middle okay now little ones the key for you when you're drawing with pencils is don't push too hard okay you push too hard you can't rub it out draw lightly and the lightness comes from your grip of of how you're holding your pencil and how much pressure you put on your pencil go light you can always go darker but it's really hard when you want to rub things out okay so i've got three circles in a row like this and now i'm going to do two circles either side using a smaller circle so i've got my sellotape here a sticky tape and these are my little zebra and i'm going to do one that side and one that side for those of you who know me really well you'll know i love a good story <laughs> uh, when i was at uh secondary school callington comprehensive school shout out to all my friends there my pe teacher used to call me uh mouse she never actually called me Karen, ever. She just called me Mouse. And, uh, it, and I do like to chat, so you'll get plenty of stories and plenty of um, chit-chat. So that's, what we're, that's where we're at. Five circles. Diddly diddly dee. And you know what? I know everybody can um, draw circles, so that's pretty easy. All right. Once you've drawn your circles, like a keyhole, we're going to go down towards the bottom and do the bottom. So let me draw you one. So it's like a vertical... Um, a vertical rectangle going underneath. I wonder if I can hold it up at the same time as me drawing it. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Okay, so I'm just drawing like that. And I'm doing each one. So even the little ones, I'm just drawing a kind of little rectangle. This is where our, the, the legs are going to be later on. So let me just hold this up as well. Now, it's not perfect, is it? Don't worry about it. Art isn't supposed to be perfect. One thing I hate is everybody in art class says, mine isn't like yours, mine isn't like so-and-so's next door. It doesn't matter what so-and-so next door's doing. Theirs could be crap. It doesn't matter. Um, what's important is that you're focused on your work and you enjoy your work, all right? It doesn't matter. Um, and art is like handwriting. Everybody's hand does it different. So you're never going to get it like mine. I'm never going to get it like yours. All good. Okay, so we've done that. That's pretty much as hard as it gets for drawing. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to split the legs down the middle. So I'm going to just quickly, and each time I'll pick this up and show you step by step, all right? So don't panic. Okay, split the legs down the middle. Super easy. And then you've got to find where the halfway point of that leg is, because that's where the knees are going to be. So I'm just going to mark where my knees are. Okay, and you can do that on each one. All right. So marking where my knees are. Do -do 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 now, from the middle part of the knee up to the bottom, you're going to do a triangle. So we're going to go from the middle part of the knee 
up is a triangle. Like this. Almost like drawing a pair of curtains, really. Super easy. Okay, and then I'm gonna try and draw this um, while I've got it up like this. And from here, we're then gonna go down. Now, giraffe's legs at the bottom are really thin. So you don't wanna be making them too thick. Okay, and down. Oh, that one a bit wobbly. Okay, once you've done that, you can rub out all of those guidelines in the middle. And it should leave you with a pair of legs. I'm going to rub out the bottom of the circle as well. And it should leave you with a pair of zebra legs, a zebra bottom. And then we're ready to put the head in and the tail in before we start painting. So this is just us getting a bit sorted here. Now, if you are drawing on canvas, because it has a rough texture, you can never get the... Um, the rubber is out 100%, but that's okay. That's good enough for us before we start painting. Okay, the next thing to do is to put our heads in and our heads are gonna go up here. Now I want you to, do, uh, sorry, a diamond. So I'm just gonna try and do this. So, and when I say a diamond, it means it's longer and it goes down like that. Okay, so you can touch it to the back, but actually what we wanna do is we wanna Square it off there and square it off there. Okay, so I'm gonna rub out those bottom lines and I'm gonna rub out those top lines. So we started off with a diamond. Let's do that again on this one. Okay, we started off at diamond up here. I'm gonna go a very odd pet drawing upside down. But you know, it's one of my many skills. I must put that on my CV. Draw across there, draw across there, all right. Rub out here, rub out here. And I'm gonna do that for each one. So hopefully you guys are doing the same. So it's been wonderful doing this. I wasn't even sure, uh, you know, how it was gonna go. And I was just loving the amount of people back home in England um, that have got onto this. Uh, Jane Smith, who used to be the head of art at Bodmin College, she contacted me. She's the director at the moment of Inter Bodmin, um, which is a fantastic um, arts facility in the old library, in the old converted library. And uh, hopefully I'm going to do some classes or hook up with them and do some art through them because obviously as an entertainment space, they've had to close their doors, you know. Um, and while that everybody's doing it, obviously you need to find something to do. So that's been lovely. Um, I've got a couple of friends that I used to work for when I used to work at Ginsters, which make Cornish pasties. You know, they've got bubbers now, um, and uh, they've been doing it with their children, which is really lovely. Pasty earrings today. Okay, and then my last one, which I'm just going to do here because I can't do it so far over. Doing my diamond, and then chopping off the bottom, chopping off the top. And where's my rubber gone? Rubbing out the top and bottom so you haven't got those points. Okay, the next stage, either side of these parts of the diamond up here, this slant and this slant, is to put two leaf shapes. These are gonna be the ears, all right? So you, look, you don't wanna make them too big, but you, they need to kind of balance. So let's see, if, again, if I can draw it and stand up at the same time. So I'm gonna go from there out it's a leaf shape or i guess an eye shape children if that's easier to think about i always think that when when you're struggling in art and you don't know how to go about drawing a shape just think about think about it as a geometric shape to start with so stop thinking about um i need to work out how to put that on silent at some point but not now so like i say i'm a novice to all this okay so there's my ears Last bit to draw is the tail. It's going to go from the centre of the bottom. So I'm just putting a little spot there. It's going to go down and it's going to bulb out. Now, what would that shape be? I guess it's very the ear, but it's obviously hanging horizontally. So down, bulb out. and that, Well, let's call it another ear shape or another eye shape. Bulb out here, down, 
bulb out. All right. So that's our zebras, all drawn, super easy. We all did it together. Now we're ready to paint. All right. Now, what I like to do straight away, the background done. And a painting like this, really free and really loose. This painting is going to be super bright, yeah? We want it bright and happy. Um, it's going to go in my daughter's new bedroom, because like I say yesterday, we just moved house. So um, I'm going to put it down here, and I'm going to hold my phone. Just popping it out of the, out of the holder. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my phone. I've gotta flip the camera. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my large square brush. I'm gonna use my large square brush and I'm gonna go for a kind of tealy background. So I'm gonna go for that kind of color. And when you're painting a background, paint it really lightly. Paint, you can always add more color to it, but you can't take paint away. So I've added some to my brush and now I am literally using the water to agitate it and move it round. So I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm using this lovely teal colour as a background. I want to two-tone it in a minute, but right now, all I'm, so I, you can see I put the paint there and now I'm just using water to push all of the colour and all of the paint around. Try not to go too heavy with the paint to start with. Okay, I'm just going to dip in it for a bit more paint and go down here. Rub it off to start with. Then use the water and start pushing the paint around up between the legs. Around the body. So I went up to get, um, as I say, I've, we've moved house and our cat is a little bit freaked out. So we've had to keep her in for a week or him in for a week, Arthur in for a week, just while he gets used to all the smells and the sounds of the new house. And he hated wearing a collar in the last place. So he took his collar off. So I had to go up to the shops today and get another collar. And oh my goodness me, that's when you know people that we are in different times. And I know I've seen it on the news, but on the news, it almost doesn't feel real, doesn't it? It almost feels like, you know, who, who, whose world is this that I'm watching? But um, I was up just the other side of the gap in a place called Kapira where the shops are. And there was a queue of people with trolleys that were queued from Aldi. Well, in metres, I would say they were probably queued 400 metres all the way around the shopping centre, around the car park, all wanting to get into Aldi. In addition to that, there's now a security guard on the door. And I just thought, I just literally, I stood there and thought, you know, this is real. Maybe you've been seeing the same yourself. I mean, I know we've all seen that the shops are empty with food, but queuing up, wow. You know, we live in a quite a quiet suburb really of Brisbane and uh, I was just shocked by that so far I haven't experienced in the supermarket a real struggle at all I haven't I haven't seen any of those sort of fighting toilet roll situations at all and I certainly yes there's been some out of stock food but it hasn't stopped us from shopping and so far we haven't really gone crazy buying loads of stuff we've bought a few extra bits some extra milk and stuff but um UHT milk I should say but other than that you know the pantry is the pantry um, but today it gave me an eerie feeling, you know, I almost looked at it and thought, oh, I don't know, maybe I should be a little bit more worried. Um, what am I, what are they, what are they understanding that I'm not, or maybe I should take the tax, you know, like the prime minister said, and people calm down, um, take a chill pill because that did seem like craziness really. All right, so I'm nearly finished. I've nearly covered. And the key for the background at this stage is really to get a beautiful coverage, get rid of all the white canvas and just get that lovely color across the background. Now, I don't want it so one dimensional. I don't want it so one color. So right now, I am now going to add in a second color. Hi, Louise. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's cute to see you on board. Okay, I'm going to stick some green down here because I know Daisy would like if my zebra were in the green grass. So I'm literally just mushing the green along. And again, I'm gonna use the water. I just kind of want it to be um, nice and loose. 
So I know some of you, I think Melinda was going to paint with watercolors. This is perfect for that. Just let the color kind of blend so you don't have so much structure because we're going to have lots of structure when it comes to the zebra. So on the, on the background, let's just keep it super loose, loose. I've gone a bit heavy with my paint in there, so I'm just going to wipe some of that off onto the newspaper. I put newspaper on. I mean, obviously in my studio, I have, um, you know, a tablecloth. So you might have uh, an oil cloth at home, an oil tablecloth, if you have used that for something to protect your table. But if you haven't, I thought, well, I'll just put it on newspaper. And that way, everybody at home, I'm sure you've got an old magazine or something that you can just put down. I want this to be as accessible to everybody. Um, if you haven't, perhaps you've got an old daggy old tablecloth or something that you could ask mum or dad or whatever if you could use. So let's hold that up like that and you can see my kind of background at the moment. So I've kind of gone for a really mottly blue background um, and then I've gone for some green at the bottom. If you wanted to do something abstract, an abstract colour you can, 100%. Uh, if you want to change up the colour, maybe you want it to be a little bit, I don't know, have some little mauve in it. Just experiment. I just thought, oh, that might add a little bit, a bit of pink in that corner as if it's kind of, I don't know, sun setting night time. And I'm just going to use the water to spread the colour. Often painting, it, painting's funny and drawing. Um, you need a lot less technique than you think. I mean, you need some technique, but often if you just play around with the materials that you've got and the tools that you've got, like a brush, you know, if you haven't got a brush, use your fingers, you know. That will give you a nice sort of mottly feel. Just tap with your fingers. There's no reason why you can't use your fingers at all. So look, dip it in the paint. Put a bit of, oh, I didn't get much paint there. Dip it in the pink. Okay, and then just tap it over here. And then just use the water to spread it round. If you have too much water, just get yourself um, a kitchen towels or a bit of toilet roll we've got plenty of that everybody we're stocked up for the next millennia and you can also do this lovely funky thing which is take some of the paint off and when that dries it will give you that kind of crinkly mottly look which is quite nice as well it gives you kind of texture textures an artist's best friend most definitely okay now for those of you that are wanting to use um textures for the coloring in part you really need to make sure your background's dry. So this is my trusty, this used to be Daisy's Hello Kitty hairdryer. It's now the art hairdryer. Um, you know, if you haven't got uh, an art hairdryer, then of course you can just use your hairdryer at home. Maybe mum's got one that you can borrow. Uh, just give it a wipe down afterwards so that you don't make it all dirty. Make sure you ask mum first, children. I'm just going around the bits that I missed around the head there. So yeah, if you're going to use textures, even Sharpies, you are going to need to make sure your background is dry because otherwise they will bleed into the water, watery black ground, okay? You need to make sure this part here is painted between the head and the body. That's part of the design, this kind of floating head. It's kind of a bit cartoonish, really, I guess. Okay, now you can do this twofold. I'm going to put, you, put the camera down and I'm going to flip it back to me <laughs> I know you've so missed me <sighs> okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to divide up your um, zebra's bottom into different sections now you can do this using a pencil so children if you're a bit nervous I've got a bit of drippage there so I'll just tab up my drippage if you're a bit nervous then you can draw it up with pencil. So you can just create different kind of areas, okay? Section it up. These are gonna be the sections where we're gonna pattern. Now you can, you can draw it and section it, or you can just free flow, whichever you wanna do, all right? Don't feel like you have to do it a certain way. I would probably free form, but um, sometimes when you're not so confident, maybe not. Before we do the body, let's do, let me show you one of the heads. Now, the idea with this painting is that each zebra is, has its own personality and its own little print, um, and it can be as wacky and crazy as you like. So I'm going to do the head. Um, this one here, I'm just going to paint with a zebra stripe. So I'm going to go across. And zebra striping is very irregular, okay? So I'm using a little brush, a bit of black, 
and it's very irregular. So you might have two or three in one side and one on that side. You have those V shapes. So it doesn't have to be perfect is what I'm saying, which makes this sort of painting for novices absolutely perfect. All right. There we go. Now, but uh, down the back of Hi Chantel, thanks for saying what an amazing initiative. I don't know, it's probably because I'm sat at home bored because all my classes have been canceled. So, you know, just sharing the love. <laughs> um, okay, so we've done our zebra patterning there on the head. And what I'm gonna do now is go right down the back of the head to create the mane. Now to paint this, I would literally just almost use the paintbrush as a stamp. That way you've got it. If you try and paint precisely, you'll end up trying to get some kind of contrived image. Um, and you don't need to do that. You, you know, it can be, it can be uh, much looser than that. So here we go, du, 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 all the way down the back of the head. And for this zebra, I think I'm gonna do black ears. So I'm gonna paint the ears in now. But my other zebras, I think I'm gonna do different color ears just to make it funky and cool. Okay, so I've got his two ears in. He might need some more patterning later, but that's where we're going to to start with. All right, I'm gonna start off doing um, a zebra pattern on this center one. So I'm gonna go right across, doing my zebra lines. Again, super easy guys, because it's not a regular pattern. Zebras are just like us, everyone is different. I think I heard once that a zebra's um, stripes are a bit like our thumbprints. Yeah, I'm sure I heard that. I don't know. I'll have to ask my niece, Abby Farrell. She's into, she used to work in the Abu Dhabi Zoo and she's kind of into all those animal e bits. She lives in the UK now. And it's a bit sad because we were all scheduled to go to Sri Lanka, which is where my twin sister has a house to ha for a wedding um, in July, but sadly, that's not looking very positive, is it? And that's, e I tell you what's even sad about that, is we were supposed to go last year, and we didn't go last year because of the bombings in Sri Lanka. So we all changed our stuff to go this year, and alas, yeah, doesn't look like we'll be going. Okay, so that is my one side. On this one bottom, I've done a half, a half, a half. Okay, then I think I'm gonna go orange. Let's get some orange. The top of his bum, I'm gonna go orange. And I might just get, give this one a bit of a wobbly line. Ooh. Like this. Let's get that right down there. Okay, then the bottom of my zebra, what should we go? People, I reckon we'll do a yellow. I think we'll do yellow spots. And once I've done my yellow spots, I think I'm gonna go down the leg on one side with yellow. To kind of, the key with art sometimes is about balancing up things. So you want things bright and crazy, but you also do need to create some kind of bright, um, some kind of balance. So down this bottom bit, I'm gonna do yellow on the, the bottom leg, and I'm gonna give it a knobbly knee as well. So there's his yellow bit. Looking good so far. All right, now I'm gonna show you a technique that, um, w that you can do with this uh, type of project, which is kind of double coloring. So let me, I'm gonna choose this teal color, and I'm gonna paint out this top area of his bottom. And then we're gonna let it dry. So I'm not gonna paint it very thick. If you're using watercolors, you're not gonna be able to do this technique because you can't scratch into it. But this is a scratching technique, which you're gonna scratch into the color. I did this the other day. I was teaching some children how to do a Lowry. No, not Lowry. It was a, uh, oh gosh, I've forgotten. A landscape. And the landscape, um, we put one colour on and then um, we scratched into it to create a second layer. And it looked really effective. So I thought, 
And when I was looking at this picture, I was thinking, yep, that's the same sort of technique we're going to do. So I've got teal there. Now, again, I want to create balance. So I think I'm going to do horizontal stripes in teal on this leg, like here. So you can see, you just basically keep on going and you keep on painting your um, zebras to finish them however you want, okay? It's as simple as that. With the ears and things like that, you can do different colors. Um, so you can really have fun. Go to town, paint it however you want. Once I've finished this, because I think it's gonna be boring watching me paint step by step. So you've got the idea of it now. Um, I'm gonna continue to finish this. I'll take a photograph at the end and I'll post it on the side, all right? Um, tomorrow we are going to have two classes. Tomorrow morning, um, and I'll post the time, we're going to do a preschool class. So something really fun, and we're going to use the insides of toilet rolls, because I'm pretty sure that's so topical at the moment, and we must have heaps. So if you can, have a dip in your bin, see if you can get a couple of inside of your toilet rolls, um, and then in the afternoon we are going to do a drawing class, okay? Um, and it will be a primary drawing class. Although, let's be honest, all of these things you can do even if you're not primary aged or an adult or whatever. Just pitch it to what you can do. I'll try and make it super simple. So you'll need some pencils, you'll need some scissors, um, you'll need a glue stick uh, in the morning and in the afternoon you'll need a drawing pencil. If you've got a variety of pencils like a 2B, a HB, a 4B, then fantastic. Um, and if you haven't, then um, just go with one. I'll show you how to get different tones out of the pencil by the pressure that you put on, all right? So I hope you've enjoyed today. I'm gonna to finish off painting this. You've got the hang of it. We've done the drawing. You've got the background done. We've started color blocking one of our zebra. Let's finish it up. Please share um, the You Create Art at Home site with as many people as you can. Please give me a like or a comment and um, I'd love to see your paintings. That would be awesome. All right, take care. See you tomorrow. Bye.